this trip by the French president is coming at a particularly fraught time for French-African relations, isn't it? Yeah, and Emmanuel Macron is definitely searching for some solace, I, I, I'd say, on this particular trip, which is his 18th to Africa. As president last night, he was welcomed by Gabonese president Ali Bongo Ondimba. This is his first visit, the first visit by a French president to Gabon since Nicolas Sarkozy in 2010. Gabon is being more receptive to France than certain other countries in Francophone Africa, particularly Mali and Burkina Faso, both of which are now under military rule and they have expelled French forces that were engaged in anti-terrorist opera operations on their soil in the Sahel. Macron will also be visiting three other Central African countries, um, Angola and the two Congos. Two of, uh, two of those four countries are former French colonies, and they're both they're all relatively well disposed towards France, but the French president's visit is not without controversy either. As we saw in the last story there, in Gabon, he's been viewed as endorsing President Ali Bongo, whom many in the country see as an autocrat, and his family have ruled Gabon for over 50 years. Uh, Emmanuel Macron wants to turn a page in Franco-African relations, but in Gabon, he's very much relying on France's old trusted networks. Uh, France's colonial legacy in Africa is still very, very contested not to mention its post-colonial operations where it continued to hold a lot of sway uh, under a policy known as France Afrique. President Ali Bongo's father, Omar Bongo, was installed with the connivance of France and very much with his support in 1967. He continued to preside over a one-party state for the next quarter of a century. It got a little bit more democratic thereafter, but the Bongo family still maintains its, uh, its grip on power. The country will have an opportunity to elect a new president later this year in elections. But France still uh, exerts a strong uh, economic influence, but there, it definitely at the moment has problems countering narratives uh, coming from uh, Russia and China in in Africa, and Emmanuel Macron himself will be hoping to give a better picture of France there on this visit. Well, so Macron is attending the summit on forests, which he helped organize. What's the significance? Uh, well, the One Forest Summit, which takes place yesterday and today, is co-organized by France and Gabon. It aims to find concrete solutions for conservation of African forests and environmental protection. Uh, but it's not going to really produce any policy changes. It's very much subjugated to the agreements already signed by the 25 uh, Paris Accords and last year's COP15 on biodiversity. In a way, it's a kinder environment for Emmanuel Macron. Uh, this morning, he visited um, at the Arboretum Rapondo Walker, which is a protective nature reserve. This afternoon, he will meet scientists, NGOs and uh, other figures at the presidential palace. The Congo Basin is the world's second biggest rainforest after the Amazon, but it's also threatened, um, uh, particularly there's about uh, 10 million hectares of forest the UN says have been destroyed in five years between 2015 and 2020. And France's presence is not without controversy either, because uh, France stands accused of some hypocrisy, uh, having sought a waiver to European Union biofuel regulations to try and build two plants to pr produce biofuel for its space project in French Guyana, that's in the Amazon. That would entail quite a lot of deforestation there. And that's uh, probably something that for Emmanuel Macron means that even a, a fairly anodyne event such as this, uh, forestry, uh, this forestry summit in Gabon is not without pitfalls for him either. Okay, Oliver Ferry from our International Affairs Desk. Oliver, thanks so much.